Again, a self-directed IRA really just isn't a type of IRA at all. We just hold private assets while other custodian companies are licensed at selling securities and they hold publicly traded assets. Most of my clients have an, uh, have an account in both places, you know, because you don't let a lot of cash sit at Quest. It doesn't make sense. We just transfer back and forth as needed. So. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Folks, I'm now so excited to bring on here in just a moment a very, very special guest. And uh, you've all been hearing me talk about how Quest Trust Company, Quest Self-Directed IRA Company is hands down the best, got the best customer service of any self-directed IRA company in the nation anywhere. And I know what I'm talking about because if you all have heard me say, I've got lots of experience with more than just one self-directed IRA company. This company Quest is phenomenal. They got about 110, 120 employees. And let me tell you something, 90% of them are working from home and they are funding deals within 48 business hours. I know this from personal experience. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a new deal to get funded with uh, one of my private lenders that have their account at Quest. In fact, all of my private lenders that are using their retirement funds, have transferred their retirement funds over to Quest. And not only have I, as the real estate investor and borrower, received uh, just phenomenal experience and their service, but my private lenders love Quest as well. They can go online at any time and, and uh, you know, see what their account balance is. And even more importantly, any question that they have, Quest answers clients' questions within one hour. That's right. Within one hour. In fact, we're going to show you a special email that you can use. And we're going to show you to here in just a few moments. Well, I'm so excited to have back on as my special guest, Nathan Long, principal with Quest Trust. And in addition to that, you all have heard me say it a number of times, but Quest is our titanium sponsor for all three of these Fridays in a row and our titanium sponsor for next week's three day virtual. If it was not for Quest, we would not be able to be coming to you here on these three Fridays without Quest being, uh, Quest being our titanium sponsor. So with that, let's bring out of the green room, Scott, let's bring Nathan Long right on out here to the forefront. So welcome, Nathan. We really appreciate the support that you've given us for the last three weeks and for the coming three day event. It's really been awesome working with you and your team and, and really enjoy hearing Jay tells stories about how you guys have helped so many people. And, and for me, I never really thought that, you know, you put money into your IRA or your, your Roth or your 401, and then it just kind of like stayed in a mutual fund. And it's amazing that it doesn't. Well, I mean, that's your choice, of course. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys so much for having me. So anyway, Nathan, I've been telling folks about y'all all day long today, and I'm so glad you're back. We thank you for, you were with me last Friday. You're back here with me today. Yeah, and, I um, talk about private money a lot. My favorite subject. Absolutely. All right. And by the way, folks, any comments or particularly any questions that you've got for Nathan, I promise you any self-directed IRA question you got, Nathan can answer your question. And last Friday, we had a ton of questions come in. So again, folks, any question you've got as Nathan is going through this information or any question about several IRAs, go ahead and type it in the comment section. And when we get to the end of his presentation, we'll get your questions answered. Over to you, yeah, Nathan. Yeah. And thank you for saying that because also in the room is one of our senior IRA specialists, Juan Deshawn. He's a specialist in also solo 401ks, and he's also in that chat box. So he can kind of answer and stuff. And he's assigned to the Jay Connor group as one of the VIP IRA specialists. So I'm talking about specific subject. I'm gonna go really fast through some of this stuff to get to the meat of it, because some of this we've just heard before. 
but I'm talking about buying a house subject to someone else's loan in an IRA. Again, we don't give tax legal investment rights. We don't endorse any products. We don't sell anything. The way Quest makes its money is we you know, people pay us fees when they process transactions. And that's good ones and bad ones. So make sure you're taking the time to do your own due diligence in there and study all the investments you do. We are legally obligated to process any investment. Again, a self-directed IRA really just isn't a type of IRA at all. We just hold private assets while other custodian companies are licensed at selling securities and they hold publicly traded assets. Most of my clients have an, uh, have an account in both places, you know, because you don't let a lot of cash sit at Quest. It doesn't make sense. We just transfer back and forth as needed so that when the money's not being used in real estate or on a loan, it can be generating back with the other guys at Charles Schwab. You just gotta know that how long it takes to transfer the money. There's a lot of benefits. There's diversification, tax savings. I love talking and talk all day long about the social benefits or why it makes so much more sense to take your IRA and self-direct it into real estate in your local community and the benefits of that versus buying a mutual fund, but I'm not gonna do that today. But the big thing is so many people have so much knowledge about doing other things and instead of doing something else, they're, they should be investing in things that they know best and understand. And if you know about real estate, which if you're on this program, that's what you should be knowing about, that's what you should be doing with your IRA. There are all different types of IRAs and other classes that we have with Jay. We spend a lot of time talking about them. A lot of people just think that a Roth IRA is the only way to invest. In today's presentation, I'm going to be talking about a lot about Roth IRAs because if you're using this very powerful investing tool of buying subject to, you probably want to do it with the Roth IRA because we're smart, starting with a smaller amount of money. And so you pay your tax on it before you convert. I have a whole class just that you can catch online about converting from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. But there's all types of IRAs. Most people don't even use the Roth IRA. We use traditional IRAs, which is all our old 401ks and plans, SEP IRAs, simple IRAs. And of course, I got Juan Deshaun on with us, solo 401ks. That is his specialty, or, or sometimes they're called individual 401ks. But we also do these things in such accounts like health savings accounts and covered Dells. And what's really amazing is you can partner all these different accounts together to create one account. You can have one subject too with four or five different uh, partners on there. There are some problems with all IRAs. There are people who are disqualified with them, right? They can't buy, sell, trade, and extend services, right? And primarily that's you. you. You have to set your IRA money apart uh, and invest it differently. That's for your future. You get to tell it everything what to do, but like if you buy a house out of it, all the expenses come from the, the IRA and, uh, and all the profit goes back into the IRA. So it's an investment for your future. In addition to you, there are people that are related to your IRA that are also disqualified, which would include you, your spouse, your lineal ascendants and descendants, their spouses and companies those people own, control, manage, or highly confiscated. Again, guys, I'm going super fast on this just to try to, to get to the good stuff here in just a minute because we have full classes just on this basic information that would be helpful if you haven't got it before or just ask Juan for some of it. Again, disqualified people can't buy, sell, trade, loan, or extend services with the IRA. So there's all different types of things you can do with IRAs. The biggest thing that we have or the biggest asset class we have right now uh, is uh, at Quest are loans. I'm a private lender. I talk about lending all the time out of my IRA. I love it, you know, but there's other types of investments, including direct purchase of real estate and investing into LLCs and those things that are buying into apartment complexes, syndication type of deals, all types of other things that do. If I lined up all of those categories and just ran a, a comparison analysis, there is one type of investment out of all the investment in Quest that just has so much more. What do you think that is? It's buying and holding real estate because you just have such a hard time beating that magic combination, which is appreciation and cash flow. You're milking both ends of the stick and no matter what you do it. Now, there is other things that go into that factor. What is that? Well, when I'm a lender, I'm not doing much work. When I'm buying and holding real estate, 
that is work related. In other words, I'm even though I can't go swing the hammer on the house that's owned inside my IRA, I'm still finding the tendons, making sure that lining up contractors, making sure entrance paid. There is work that goes into it. And when we but when you add then borrowing money or buying the house debt leveraged uh, on top of that, now I can multiply that play out and even make more money. The key is, and I'm going to be very specific, this investment is not set for everyone. Why? You have to have good coaching and training about how to handle real estate and how to handle subject twos. It's a, it's, it's a deeper level. And as we add an IRA to it, it even becomes a deeper level. But my God, it's like the trifecta when you make this play. Because what you're doing is you're going to take tax-free money, leverage it with someone else's money, right? And then do a play that you get appreciation and cash flow. There's just nothing that works better. Okay. There is a problem, though, directly related to IRAs or several problems that we're going to discuss whenever we employ this strategy inside of an IRA. All right. And the first one that I talked about a little bit is that the loan that the IRA gets, if it buys a home and that home is debt leveraged or has a loan on it, must be non-recourse. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that in the event of default, the only thing that you can take back is the house itself and you can't extend any credit. So when the bank loans the money to you, they can foreclose on that property and take the property, but they can't go after any other assets in the IRA. And because you don't own it, you don't extend your credit. There's no personal guarantee on there. Is there banks that do this? Yes. I, I, I use the bank, North American Savings Bank. I'll give them a little plug there. There's other banks there too, but they do non-recourse loans to IRAs. What's the catch? You're going to get hit a big down payment. It's a big down payment, 30 or 40%, somewhere in that range of uh, things. So why is it that subject twos work so well in IRAs? Is because when you purchase a house subject to, that original loan is recourse, but because you're coming over to wrapping that loan around, around it, then that becomes non-recourse to the IRA. So that means if we've done the legal paperwork right at the time of assumption that our IRA can buy houses subject to and get around very easily this non-recourse provision. That's why we like to talk about it. Okay. So why, again, why would you buy it? It, it is so profitable, right? There's just nothing that makes it better. I think I kind of went over that screen. Here's an actual example of a customer that this is a part-time real estate investor. This is a true story right? He came across this deal. Now look at this deal. This is a deal that 99% of everybody would pass on. Where he got the deal from was his a realtor friend of his. He asked him, said, hey, do you have any deals that you can't make funds or you can't you can't get done just because there's not? He says, yeah, I got this nice little house. It's like the house is worth about $85,000 after repair value, but it's got an outstanding loan of $82,000 the guy's $4,000 back in payments and, and closing costs to catch up. And it needs about $4,500 in repairs. He says, you know, and I need to get paid as a commission as a realtor. There's just no deal there. Everyone see that? No deal. Okay. But if you stop and look at it, oh, by the PITI payments were eight sixty five. dollars Stop and look at it. And what, what he did is he thought, this is a great deal for my Roth IRA because I'm young and I have a long time before I actually need this money. So all the money come out of his IRA. So he did a small conversion, okay? And he ended up paying tax on about $8,500. So he'd have this much money in his IRA and bought the house subject to, did repairs and put a renter into it. Now, if you think about it, he only spent $8,500 out of his Roth IRA, right? What's going to happen in time? In time, that value of that property is going to go up. Rents are going to go up. But the other part of it is we're paying that property down. And as we pay that property down, eventually, because Bob's very young, eventually, before he retires, this house will be completely paid off. He'll have a completely paid off house that is creating rents. So fast forward a little bit. I got a little bit of, of thing. 
This happened actually about seven years ago inside of this particular client's IRA. This house was at the edge of downtown area in Houston. The house is currently valued, hello, ladies and gentlemen, at $270,000 and is rented out at $2,350 a month. Tell me he did not do a good deal in his IRA, right? But even when you fast forward 20 years, he's going to have a free and clear property, right? And that property is going to triple or even more, right? It just depends on where the property is. I love this play on inner city properties that are small because it keeps the repair amount small. Remember, you may have limited funds in that Roth IRA. So if a big repair hits, you want to always keep a little cash. So, and again, go back. Don't do subject to deals unless you've had proper training. I, I can't emphasize how important that is because you're taking other people's lives into consideration by using their credit. You're getting them out of a problem deal, but you got to make sure that those payments are going to be made, that the properties being things, and putting the right renters in them, and you're paying all the property laws and stuff of that of the state you're in. I can't emphasize how important that is to be successful at this, but again, makes a thing. So again, what are the problems with doing it? I, I mentioned one, there's two, that the loan has to be non-recourse and I discussed sub buying subject to is does it. But this is the worst thing I'm gonna ever have to talk about is that, and it's a dirty little secret sometimes, Jay, people don't like to talk about. When you do certain types of investments in an IRA, they can become taxable, okay? Now, in order for me to really understand these types of things, what I have to do is I have to identify the problem and then what I'm going to do is tell you the solutions to the problem in order to do this. Okay. So let's look at the problem. The problem is, is that sometimes you can have tax inside an IRA. You can actually never do an investment with an IRA that creates tax to you personally. And I have people say, wait a second, I just did a Roth conversion and that created tax to me. No, you didn't do an investment. You took money out of your IRA and put it into a different IRA and you moved it from a taxable account to a tax-free account and that created tax. But any investment you do in an IRA never makes tax to you personally, but they can make tax to the IRA. They have to file their own tax return. Well, what's the most common thing here is what we call owning a business. So if we own a business, if we're selling lemonade, right, and we're being competition with other lemonade stand makers, if we had a lemonade stand owned by a Roth IRA, that's not prohibited. We couldn't work there. We couldn't receive a salary, but we could own the lemonade stand. Everyone got that? But the income from that lemonade stand would still be taxable under a set of business laws called unrelated business income tax, okay? At what rate would it be taxed at? Well, it's taxed at ordinary income at a trust rate, which is really high. In other words, it hits this top rate of tax of 39.5% right off the bat, like somewhere around $12,000 of income. So most people would run a business inside an IRA for that reason. That doesn't mean having an LLC inside an IRA is running a business because the LLC could be investing in property or something else that is an investment type of entity, which is separate from actual creating things. So what are some of the things that are considered running a business that we do see in an IRA? Renting personal property like mobile homes that are not attached to land, but we also see it with like medical equipment, large trucks and other types of equipment and containers, things like this. All of these strategies um, are also oil. All of these are strategies we do see a lot inside of IRAs People choose to go ahead and pay the tax on those types of things because it's also very profitable or it's something that they're knowledgeable about. They know a lot about oil or something. Again, that doesn't affect us. There's the other side of the same law that really affect us, which is debt financed things. And let me, I got to explain it to you in a story for you to be able to get it. All right. <laughs> So say we want to buy a house in my IRA. I don't have enough money to buy the house. The house costs hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to buy it for forty, or I'm going to buy it for hundred thousand. Buying about forty thousand dollars down, I'll go to North American Savings Bank and get a loan there for sixty thousand dollars. So when I purchase the house, I am sixty percent debt leverage. I sell the house one day later in my story, and I sell it for two hundred thousand dollars, making one hundred thousand dollars in profit. Woo me! Okay, 
Out of that $100,000 in profit, though, I have a problem. $40,000, because I was 40% paid cash, 40% of my profit is not taxable, but 60% of that is taxable. Taxable at what rate? Well, remember, capital gains or it's taxes ordinary income. I don't get capital gains treatment because I didn't hold it for over a year. But if I had held it over a year, I could have gotten a capital gains rate. Okay. But because I didn't, I'd have to pay at this very onerous rate. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to give 25000 out of that 60, 30000 or something like a whole bunch of that money to, to the IRS. Everyone got the problem. It's a very high tax. Then I always ask people, would you do this deal? And everyone goes, no. And I said, stop and drink some coffee. Listen to the story for real. I took $40,000. I got my $40,000 back in one day. I got another $40,000 and I got to split $60,000 with Uncle Sam. Sign me up every day. The real problem with the story is it's not real and we don't make $100,000 in one day, but I'm just trying to define to you. Some people's minds just shut off because they have to pay a tax. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the worst problem in the world. Everyone got it? But now that we understand the problem is that we may have to pay tax if we buy debt leveraged property inside an IRA, let's look at the solutions, Okay. Don't be confused. If your IRA went out and bought a house in cash, you wouldn't pay any tax at all. The only thing that creates this UBIT problem is when I buy property that has debt or is debt leveraged. Solution one, depreciation. I'm sorry, this is so thick, Jay. <laughs> Solution one, depreciation, okay? I know a lot of you have real estate that's rental property. And what do you do is when you get rent income in, you get to depreciate. You know, so that means that you don't always pay that tax on that. But does that mean the tax goes away? No. What that does is it pushes the tax off to the future, right? And whenever you sell that house, you have to recapture that in the future. Well, normally, and you'll even hear a lot of tax experts talk about this, say, I wouldn't buy real estate in my IRA because you lose one of the most important deductions you get. When you do it inside an IRA, you don't get to depreciate your IRA. And I always get confused by that statement. I said, so, so you wouldn't do real estate at all? No, but I make a lot more money buying real estate and renting it than if I were buying stocks or whatever. And so over time, if I just buy the stocks, I'm going to have a little IRA. But if I buy real estate, I'll have a big IRA. Mr. Financial Guy, isn't a big IRA better than a little IRA? I mean, they, they honestly can't see through through the trees. But why is it you lose depreciation when you buy real estate in an IRA? It's really simple. It's because you don't pay any tax. You can't get a tax deduction if you don't pay any tax. But as soon as these laws kick in, you know, where we have to pay tax on our real estate, guess what? We can now use depreciation, but depreciation works differently in an IRA. It's magic for certain things especially under most subject to problem. Like the subject to example that I gave, this is exactly what they did. What happens is if we use depreciation as we're getting that rent money in, it is subject to this unrelated business income tax to the amount that's debt leverage. But I can pull off, you know, of course, my payments and also any repairs. And now I can subtract out depreciation. So we try to depreciate the property as much as possible right? And what are we doing if we depreciate? We're pushing that tax off to the future. But there's a magic element here. An IRA only pays tax on the amount it is debt leveraged. When I bought the property in my story I was given, right? If we go back to that story, instead of me buying the property and selling it in a day, I bought it and I hang on to it. And I hang on to it for a long time. And what I'm trying to do is pay off that principal balance. Well, what happens is I, when I bought that property, it was at 60% debt leveraged. But as I make each payment, that amount's going down. Fast forward into the future, right? As long as I don't sell it before I pay off that property or have what we call an average indebtedness of zero. In other words, I've had the property paid off zero. All this complicated terms make it sound much more complicated than it is. Then how much would I have to pay in tax is zero. 
All I'm doing is pushing that tax off to the future. Again, not all these solutions work for everyone, but if you are a true buy and holder where I'm buying the property and I'm not trying to increase that debt as I go along, like I might do an apartment complex or a commercial property, I can use depreciation and work on paying down that debt and get, get as much depreciation as I possibly can prior to paying off the property. As soon as I pay off the property, the UBIT problem completely goes away from there on out. Here's another solution I've used. And I wouldn't use this so much too often with a C Corp, but I mean with a subject two, but you could do that, which is you could use a C corporation. See, a C corporation, we normally wouldn't use when we're buying property as an individual because we'd have to pay tax at the corporate level. And then we can pay, then we have to pay tax again as we get to dividends. But if an IRA owns a C corporation, the C corporation pays tax at the corporate level, and then the, the money comes through. I, I've seen this one used in syndication type of deals. If you want more information about that, look at my problems and solutions class that we have online, or ask Juan Deshawn for it, the problems and solution class in buying commercial real estate. We talk a lot about different types of solutions, and I'll, and I'll get a little bit deeper into that. All right. And then... I have a third solution, which I call it the magic bullet, but my last solution has its own set of problems. And, and, and again, that's why I want, one of the reasons why Juan's a specialist and, and on here, but you can do a solo 401k. With a solo 401k, there's a specific exemption inside of this type of account. We can transfer our IRAs into here. We can't move a Roth IRA in as odd as is, but we can do a conversion inside. We But once we move the money into a solo uh, 401k, as long as we're holding the property over one year, this tax just simply goes away. It's like the magic bullet. Well, damn, Nathan, why didn't you start with that? Well, because a solo 401k comes with its own set of problems. The biggest one is you have to legitimize it. In other words, you can't say, oh, I just want a 401k. I actually have to have self-employment income, and I have to make a contribution off that self-employment income in that first year. Again, uh, but there's other problems like reporting problems. It's a very dangerous type of account and record keeping. We do hold these types of accounts, but we very much insist if you that you can demonstrate to us that you have the proper principles to be able to understand and use these types of accounts. It's like a lot of very powerful tools. They're very good when used right with proper coaching and education. When it's used correctly, it can be one of the most powerful tools out there. And it has a lot of other advantages to it, like checkbook control, big contributions. You can even loan to yourself. But the biggest advantage of a solo 401k is this exemption from unrelated debt financed business income tax inside the IRA. Guys, I got it. I like really like threw out a ton of information really, really quick. I'm not even sure where I am on time to tell you the truth, but I'm sure you probably have some questions. The way to contact us is you can go to Jay Connor Quest Trust there, or like I said, we got Juan Deshawn. He is a 401k expert. He's been with us for a long time at Quest. He's one of the IRA specialists assigned to the Jay Connor VIP group. Hey, Nathan, I got a question and that is, but first, before I give you the question, I just want to tell everybody, I'm telling you folks, Quest Trust Company has got the best education and it's all free. It's all free. Quest has got the best education for self-directed IRA companies and all the ins and outs and et cetera. So Nathan, I know you mentioned it and Juan put it here in the chat that your class on problems and solutions to buying real estate, where can people go specifically to actually watch and consume that education and that class? Well, you can go to the directly to the website. I honestly think it's a good idea instead to just send an email to Juan or pick up the phone and call him or, or catch him on chat. He's going to package up the right education. He might get that video and a couple of other videos they stacks on top of it and send you an email that, that matches what you're trying to do. Okay. Well, if Juan could type in the chat, Juan, you know, maybe your email address or your phone number or whatever it should be, or if it's the Jay Connor email, what's the best way, Juan, for folks to reach out to you with a question or to get, you know, access to these trainings? There's Juan's email address. So Juan, it's right there in the chat, y'all. And Scott's got it up on the screen. Juan.Deshawn at Quest trust.com 
any kind of training that you that you're interested in or the problems and solutions training you can get that from Juan. but my lens nathan you went over like that was some awesome information you know what this is the first time, Nathan, I've ever heard anybody actually teach how to use their self-directed IRA funds to invest in real estate using the subject to strategy. That's awesome. I, uh, I talked this morning, of course, this whole day is framed around subject to, but I went nonstop for like an hour, 45 minutes this morning on the ins and outs of, you know, buying subject to. <laughs> well, good, good. I, 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 uh, that, that, that's what they said that they did. I threw this presentation together just for, for you a couple of days ago. So hopefully I was trying to go fast, but my point is, is it's not my job to teach them how to do subject twos. I just want them to know that right. they can do it in an IRA. There's some scary parts to it, but they can be worked through as long as you understand them. But I think it comes with a warning. It's just like everything that's super powerful. You got to be super cautious with it and make sure you have proper education and proper training. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for taking the time to come on here with us today. I appreciate well, it. As you know, I help real estate investors raise a lot of private money for their real estate deals. You may not know that I have an exclusive private money academy membership. That's right. A monthly membership where we actually spend time together twice a month on Zoom. That's the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month. And I invite you to come check it out. We have hundreds and hundreds of members that always share their deals with each other, how they're finding deals. And of course, how we get all of our deals funded. I want to give you a four week trial to just come check it out absolutely free. And you can do that in the description below. Go check out the URL, the website below right here in the description. And I'll see you at the Private Money Academy membership. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.